RF man here. Uh, today I'm going to demonstrate my dual LD MOS amplifier. And once again, I'll be using the ICOM 735. And what I want to demonstrate is how the output waveform should look. Um, basically, if everything is correct in your amplifier, you should have a very clean looking sine wave, very little distortion, very little noise. So I wanted to demonstrate that today. So what I did was I picked the center of the high frequency band. So, you know, 1.8 to 50 megahertz. So I'm right in the middle there, around 25 megahertz. Okay. And this is the same setup I used in other videos. So you can see I have a 6 dB attenuator. Remember with the LD MOS technology, you can only uh, drive this with one to one and a half watts. That's all you need. So what I'd like to do here, let me just shut this light off. I like to monitor the input wattage. Okay, it's five watts. So you can see it's about one watt of drive. Okay, and again, the same setup. I'm using the same switching power supplies. These are well filtered power supplies so you're not going to get any noise or ripple or anything that would be audible in your transceiver and I'm using a 1500 watt dummy load and I've got my bird 43 line section and you can see I'm using a 2500 watt slug there okay so I just have a dead key at about a thousand watts just for this demonstration and there you see the thousand watts. Okay, you could turn the dead key up to 15, 1800 watts, and you get about 3000 watt swing when you modulate. But that's not the purpose of this video. Uh, I really wanted to focus on what the output waveform should look like. So, this radio has a very clean output, very, very clean, very symmetrical sine wave. So, I'm not going to show that. Um, most of the ICOM radios are very good. Uh, you got a good input, good clean sine wave. So we'll, we'll just focus on the output. So what I have here is I'm using my scope probe that's a times 100 attenuation. Okay, and I've got the scope set. You can see that to one volt per division times 100. So it would be about 100 volts per division. Okay, and we got about a 800 volt peak to peak uh, signal, sine wave. Okay, and we can also monitor the frequency there. So when we key up, we should see that it's at 25 megahertz. So I'll go ahead and just key up, no modulation. And there you can see a very clean sine wave. 25 megahertz okay and then when we modulate audio 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 there's no distortion it's linear okay it's modulating very nicely and that's what the sine wave should look like so I just wanted to demonstrate that some of you asked me uh, what the sine wave should look like and you know it depends really on the configuration of your amplifier, the grounding. I've got my SO239 connectors grounded with a very heavy ground braid here. I'm going to try to show that down there. Um, I don't have this in a box. Of course, if you have it in an enclosure, then you got a better ground and better shielding. So you'd expect it to actually look better with the shielding around it. But, but yeah, your SO239 connector should be well grounded. You should have good system grounds without too many ground loops. Of course, you've got to have a pretty clean, well-filtered power supply. Um, I provide a very large choke, as you can see there, and that really helps to clean up the RF, okay? But some power supplies might be noisy, so you might have to add maybe uh, some, some ferrites um, on there, yeah, like a couple of these snap-on ferrites might help, 
Okay, so you can try those. That'll give you a little more impedance. Snap those right on the positive and negative side of your 50 volt power supply. So you might be able to clean up a little bit of the ripple. Uh, if you got an oscilloscope, it helps to take a look at it. Um, and of course the impedance has to be matched on the output. So we're not getting too much reflected power. But these are the basic things to look at. Um, you can take a look at your output. I'm assuming if you got a good radio, then you got a clean sine wave coming in. Check the grounding. Check the RF. Check the impedance matching. Check the, the reflected power. Um, these things can all contribute to a distorted sine wave. So that's it. I just wanted to demonstrate that RF man here. Thank you.